Yo, Issa. My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, peak up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. They watch the champions cup, Ben Francis. Walk a cup with team, I win the championship this season. Back with more football on the Sportsmax Zone. St. Andrew Technical and Jamaica College renewed their rivalry, but unlike previous seasons when they met in the Manning Cup showpiece, the teams were left battling for the Walker Cup title this fr last Friday. And as we have grown to expect in finals between the two, a penalty shootout was needed to separate them after a 1-0 draw in regulation time. It was in that shootout that controversy erupted. Zinedine McLean's penalty was brilliantly saved by the stats custodian Jaheim Williams as stats celebrated and prepared to take their next kick. The fourth official, Kessler Anderson, spotted the ball moving as the kick was about to be taken. Now, he brought this to the attention of the referee, Tyrone Robinson, who ordered a retake, and it was converted. Kevin Hall then missed the next spot kick for St. Andrew Technical High School as JC celebra celebrated their fourth Walker Cup crown. So, did the officials get that decision right? Should JC have been allowed to uh, retake the penalty. Let's go to the thoughts of former FIFA referee and referee instructor uh, Peter Prendergast. Uh, Prendy, uh, a man who has refereed in World Cup finals football before. Um, I heard you in local media commenting on this uh, controversy, uh, repeated for the viewers of the Sports Mag Zone. Okay, uh, that the decision by the, the refereeing team was not correct. So let's start right there. Yeah. And it was not correct because at the moment the kick was being taken, the actual contact with the ball, the ball had stopped. Okay? So it is a requirement that the ball is stationary. Now, the defending team, the goalkeeper, did not commit an infringement. That's one of the, one of the, the reasons for a retake. Yes. If he left the line before the kick, etc. That did not happen. So all was on the kicker himself to place the ball, which he did twice. Once he tried to place it at the edge of the circle, this stupid thing that, he, that they are doing, and it rolled back. He, he replaced it. Now it is on him to kick the ball when the ball is settled. It is on him. He must have seen that there was some movement upon approach. And if you see some movement and you're not comfortable, then you wait, then you take the kick. Yes. So it's on the kicker at this moment. Okay, the referee's position is the best position to make a decision. There, it is almost impossible for the fourth official from his angle to determine if the ball moved and how much and if it stopped. The problem started when the pressure came from the team bench. It is the JC team bench that rushed towards the fourth official that started this whole story. And it is unfortunate that the referee yielded to this erroneous information because the information is erroneous and um, had a retake. There's yeah. no provisions in the law to accommodate a retake so here. You're saying that it was a legal kick. Nothing was wrong with the kick. Absolutely. Was the fourth official in his right to do what he did? Like, is that within his list of things to do? No. We on okay. The protocol in this situation is that the the assistant referee pay attention to the assistant referee leaving the line or not yes. prior to the kick. The referee's responsibility is to look at both situations. The kicker whether the kicker infringes or not. The role of the fourth official is to control the benches yes. and to take notes. Right. Now, you, the, as a team, if you have credible information to give to the referee, then you can give the information. Yeah, Where he is at, that information cannot be credible. Therefore, should not have been accepted. It is outside of, of, of his direct responsibilities. The host would have to be on fire for him to really get involved in that. There was also a statement that, let's just say it was a goal. Would that have been different? Uh, absolutely. If, if the goal was scored, would it have been allowed? Would he have said, oh no, there's an infringement. What infringement? That the ball wasn't fully settled? I, 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 I really don't get it. It's a very unfortunate um, thing to have occurred. And um, as a football fan, a fan of the game, 
it was not a good moment for football. Yeah. And outside of the point that you are making from the technical assessment of what's happening, your heart has to go to the St. Andrew technical team who has known only defeat against uh, Jamaica College and big finals mm -hmm. like this. I mean, that is not a part of what we are assessing, but sure. just, just from the humanities standpoint, um, you have to feel some sympathy for the St. Andrew technical team without, and their without supporters. A doubt. We, yeah. without, without a doubt. And I want to say this to the coaches and the the technical staff of these of the teams, right? They sometimes put the press, the referees under undue pressure, right? Jamaica College a few years ago at Sabina Park, right? And I'll never forget that situation because there was a big statement made by a very well-known person in this island that the referees is, is, is incompetent. It was on the front page of the Gleaner. And the, the referee was absolutely correct. And he never apologized. And he was one of the persons, again yesterday, jumping onto the referee's decision. And the referee was correct in, a, in, in, is he, in so not, in the first instance, was about to, was not allowing the goal to be retaken, the kick rather to be retaken, until the fourth official got involved based on the pressure no, the from these same persons. We have to do better than that. Mm. What does it say, though? Because I feel like too often now, we're talking about bad calls, and the thing is, it's not only costing a team, it's costing the game. You know, um, we don't have enough referees in the island. We don't have enough support for referees in the island. We don't have enough money to, 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 for proper training. We have the referees doing four or five games a week because we don't have enough persons. And to compound that with the pressure from the teams, it's really not easy. It's hard to get persons to wanting to become involved with refereeing when all of this pressure, you know, when it's not about your anatomy, it's that of your parents and your, you know, all of this that goes on, the abuse. But the, the, the football has to understand that the game cannot be played without much officials. We need to start to invest in refereeing, male and female alike, refereeing, don't care whether it's male or female. We need to invest in the attracting referees, more referees into the, mm. into the system. Yeah, but we have had some good moments. Yeah, Prendy, I want to ask you a quick a question here on the, something you just touched on, you know, about the pressure that comes from, you know, benches. And I can extend it to fans as well, because um, in your days as a referee, um, there is documentation of Peter Prendergast having confrontation with fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something global I'm going at now because we are talking here about football in the schoolboy uh, season for Jamaica. But even at the highest levels of football, we see in England the VAR um, referees coming under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. for making errors that the, the average fan looks on and can see it as an error, but somehow the officials got things, things wrong. Um, are referees trained as part of your training to resist and keep control in moments of heavy abuse from fans? Because personally, I've said that in my office all the time, that I would never be a referee because I, mm -hmm. I don't believe I should stand doing my job and people hurling abuse at me yeah. that I think is um, way over the top. Um, what is your take on how football should govern the behavior of fans and what is the limit? What is the limit that fans are allowed when we talk about abusing match officials? Okay, f firstly, I want to say not enough is done on the psychological part of the, of the, of the game yes. as it relates to refereeing. Not, not enough. We need to spend more time on this. Um, the, the, the lack of support from sometimes the, the, the federation and the, the competition organizers who just want to see the game play. Sometimes you see a mud and water, that ball cannot move. Yeah. And the, the guys in charge from the competition say, no, well, you have to finish the game. You have to finish the game. And this is not just in Jamaica. This is at a high, even at a higher level. We, there are times that I have to stand up and say, this game N is not going to play. Yeah, because the it puts your not, reputation. No, at no stake. absolutely. The referee is not going to take the responsibility mm -hmm. for the safety of the player. Something go going awry. Yes. Okay. So, 
Um, as far as abuse is concerned, when I couldn't take it anymore, we made a big thing about it. And we started to send players, I mean, sorry, spectators out of the stadium again. Once it's a, it's a, it is a threat towards the life, it's not boy for a thief, all right, we can deal with that. But once it goes past the line to a threat, which happens? Yes. Once that happens, we say to referees, hey, hold on a little bit. Identify the person. If we can't get it corrected, get that man out of the stadium, or don't matter who it is, man or woman. Get them out of the stadium. And it's part of the responsibility that the referee has for the, the game, what's happening in and around, anything that can impact the outcome of the game. We need to be stronger with the coaches, because the coaches, their behavior oftentimes transcends to the pitch. And the players yes. at the end. And in the stands as well. Listen, yes. At the end of the, of the game with Clarendon College when they lost last week. To Glenmuir in the Champions yeah. Cup final. It is my understanding that a player kicked down the referee door in National Stadium and threatened the referee about gunshot and all different kind of thing. You know. For it real? is in the report. It is in the report. Let's see what will happen. Wow. Let's see what will happen. Kicking the door of the referee team. And I haven't heard a peep about it. Mm. What's going on? This is oftentimes a problem. And I have to say, almost every schoolboy finals, we have this problem of crowd invasion. Yes. So why? It keeps it, happening. <gasps> it's rocket science. I like that. Mm. It's not rocket science. We just don't pay enough attention to these things. In that same stats game, the, re the referees were confronted by the coaches, of the coaches for quite a bit of a while before any security presence was there to form a barrier separation between the persons and the match officials. Crazy stuff, but when Peter Brennigas talk, boy, I love talking, you know, rah, rah, rah. if I were in charge, these things would not happen. Like with the Dr. Sabina part that time, the game was held up for 45 minutes. We're not starting until these basic things are in place. Until then, we can't play. I notice a major lack of respect no, no, for no. referees. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. This went on for a long time, pointing in the referee's face, threatening the referee for a long time. Where is the security person who was in charge of the security detail to know that as soon as there's a problem, intercept. Right? And, and, and if you know, <laughs> I, am, I don't care where it is, you know. You check YouTube, Panama, Mexico, 2015 Gold Cup. And you will see who flying out there on the pitch to save a referee from Panama team attacking him. You look and see who it is. So I personally don't care where it is. I am going to defend my match officials. So who vex, vex. And this is not going to happen again. As long as I am around and I am here, it's not going to happen again. Because we're going to make sure that the basic things are done. But we have to deal with referee training. When we need support. We need support. We need support, and I, I, I beg in. We need support, and the, the coaches need to understand, and the technical staff. If you continue to try to abuse the match officials, who were for your game? Because at some point, you're going to stop. Yeah. So decide whether you want the football to work and work with us. Una para todos, todos para uno. Let's work to, all together, because it's football. Just like I have said. You don't ask me about the JFF election, but I'll volunteer the information. <laughs> <laughs> Referees should not vote in a presidential election. Yes. That's my take. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter who is there, you will have to serve that administration. Yes. Vote on policies. And that's why they don't want to give my organization the accreditation that is required, because they know they're not going to get a vote from me. Right? So they try all different kind of chicken business. That's another story. But this is my view. So which, Pre which referee platform is given the vote? There are none. Mm. And the one who has everything is in place is not being given. Because, them, because I say, referees mustn't vote in a presidential election. That is my honest opinion. Yes. You know what? I, I, want to, I want to say that refereeing is a tough job. Mm. You know, and I, I often hear referees being abused and so on. And for the most part, you know, I, I don't think referees go there to do a bad job. And referees are only human, so errors can be made, which is why VAR was brought in. And I'm not sure how close Caribbean football in our domestic leagues can, can get to having VAR instituted in our football because our football in the Caribbean is underdeveloped.
in almost every way. So um, I'm not sure if VAR will be coming our way anyway, anytime soon. Would, would you like to see VAR in domestic football in the Caribbean? I'm not a fan of, of, you are not. of VAR. No, I'm not a fan of VAR. Why not? Right? Because the game has, these are some of the things that makes the game what it is. Players miss goals, great saves, all of that is involved. Errors by the referee is part of the game. Trust me, that's what you talk about in the bars after the game. However, with the advent of VAR, we have to work with the VAR. Yes. Right? VAR also are not, VAR are human beings looking at images. Yes. And making a determination. And we have seen errors yes. by humans. So we're getting away from the, getting away from the human face and going electronic, but it's people, the same humans have to deal with the electronics. Yeah. And we're still having problems, so what is next? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I use RAV. What's that? Referees always viewing. <laughs> That's why we work so much on angles, angle of view, proximity for control, we work on the, the basic things that will get the best possible decision, being in the right place at the right time. So we work hard at that to avoid VAR, which is Video assistant ref referee. So you've turned it the other way yeah, around. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And it, it is working, but we need more help. We need more training. Referees, top class referees, cannot be refereeing, refereeing four games a week. Yes. When do they train? Mm. And rest. Exactly. Because there's a lot training. of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. So we have a we have a we have a problem with the, with the concentration, mm -hmm. right? The mentally are tired and they work. They're not professionals. They have to go to work. Yes. So, come on, we're human beings, not machines. Yeah. You know? Not, not machines. Not like this beautiful place. Look at it. I didn't yeah. realize that I was in Jamaica. But that was in some... <laughs> no. <laughs> congratulations. This well, is well, well, fantastic. That's, that, that's why we're the home of champions. No, I totally agree. <laughs> Peter Frendegaard, former FIFA referee and currently FIFA referee instructor, um, breaking down what happened in the Schoolboy Walker Cup final on Friday between Jamaica College and St. Andrew Technical. A controversial penalty retaken and uh, Jamaica College benefiting from that and going on to win the Walker Cup for a fourth time. Brendy, thanks for joining us here on the Sports Max Zone. You've been on many times via Zoom, <laughs> but we are happy to have you in the studio live. Thanks again, sir. Pleasure. And uh, we'll be back with more on the Sports Max Zone after this. Schoolboy football. Yo, Issa. My schoolboy football look this season. People, I'm ready, you know. All right, then. Peek up. Man in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. We watch the Champions Cup. Ben Francis, what a cup.